100 Premier League appearances for Thiago Silva. Alfie Gilchrist is the second coming of John Terry. We've got a here we go from Fabrizio Romano. Chelsea have signed yet another superstar youngster, hopefully. Hopefully. And plenty more to get into today. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. But yes, what's poppin' people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you're doing well, mate. I really do hope that. And welcome back to Chelsea News, of course, the daily series here on the channel where I reflect on what's being, blah, 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 what's being said about Chelsea. I try and learn to talk at the same time. Give you my, <laughs> give you my opinion on it, but more importantly, asking for yours. Like I said, there's lots I want to get into today. I also want to talk about players like uh, Misha Mudrik and Noni Madweke, of course, was the hero of the day at Crystal Palace and what was largely an underwhelming performance. Of course, there was... He was a standout performer, maybe him, Mudrik, you'd have to say as well, man of the match, Malo Gusto at the back. If you want my full like thoughts on the detail of that game, do go check out my previous uh, upload, which is the complete breakdown of Chelsea 2, Crystal Palace 1. But today is a Chelsea news video, so let's get into some different stuff now. First of all, shout out Thiago Silva, 100 Premier League appearances, just sensational stuff. We signed this guy when he was, what, 36 years old? Yes, yes, the OGs of football therapy out there might be you. You'll know that I had reservations about this signing. I was worried about a 36-year-old coming from, you know, PSG, essentially playing in the superpower in the French League as a 36-year-old. We all agreed Thiago Silva was like footballing royalty, but it seemed like a big, big risk to me. Of course, Frank Lampard was desperate to sign him. He signed him, and the rest is history. At the time, I wanted Lewis Dunk, which, by the way, doesn't seem like such a crazy shout now. Of course, he's like playing for England really, really well and looks like a really good cultured centre back. Of course, he's probably about, what, six, seven years younger than Thiago Silva. But Thiago Silva, what an incredible signing. It's not just the performances, of course, winning the Champions League and just playing really well at the highest level. It's, of course, his like dedication and his entire family's integration into the Chelsea culture. They sort of, you know, I know it's a bit lame to say it, but they, they get it, you know, when a when a player comes to a new team to understand the culture, the fans, and just become a part of the family, and when his own family becomes a part of that family as well, it's a good feeling, and what a sensational cult hero Thiago Silva is and will be for Chelsea, you know, forever. So before we talk about the juicy news, I do want to shout out Alfie Gilchrist. I was rightly pulled up on it, uh, the fact how I didn't go into detail or maybe even shout him out in yesterday's match review. Of course, he came on for his Chelsea debut. He's 20 years old now. He's been with Chelsea for a long, long time. Massive Chelsea fan. Uh, he's trained with the first team before. But, uh, you know, come into the side, recently played loads of uh, minutes in the youth team and just have that <laughs> kind of crazy, crazy uh, debut. He was all over the gaff, of course. There's that clip of him like running down the touchline, throwing his head at the ball. You know, John Terry recently marked him as like one for the future. He sort of came on looking a little bit like John Terry in terms of putting his head where it hurts. And it got a lot of people excited and the comparisons are there, of course. Uh, uh, academy graduate, central defender, uh, central defender in English. J JT himself has, you know, marked him as one to look out for. So it's very, very exciting indeed. I mean, hopefully, I mean, Chelsea are still going to try and sign a centre back. I don't think they're going to just slam dunk this kid into the lineup. He probably, like John Terry said, will go on a loan somewhere. Hopefully, a high level loan if he gets recognised as, a, as a, the talent that he is. Anyway, it's good news. So we'll switch over to some bad news. Apparently, Romeo Lavia had got injured after his debut coming off the bench in the game against Crystal Palace. Of course, he came on, saw about, what was it, half an hour maybe in terms of match minutes to get into his legs, which was a welcome surprise for Chelsea fans. Well, maybe not a surprise. He eventually does need to play football. But at the end, uh, Nathan Gissing, uh, writer for Demazio, explained that he understands there's been an injury in his thigh, um, which is very, very worrying and, if true, disappointing for us Chelsea fans. He's a really good player, dude. This guy can cost up to 58 million quid. Liverpool want him despite being, I think he's still 19. I think he's been 19 for about four years, this kid. You know, he's seen as such a massive, massive talent. Of course, this is a Joe Shield signing. He really loves him. Cole Palmer was a Joe, Joe Shield signing. So, like, you know, if he gets two big hits here, let's just make this guy call all the shots <laughs> in terms of first team starting 11 players. He did look pretty good, Lavia. I think his stats on the day were pretty good. Um, I, or I saw in social media somewhere that he completed some good stats. But he came off, and of course, Nathan Gissing has said he understands there's a thigh injury. Maurizio Pochettino has since come out and says, yes, he understands 
Lanza is a bit of a problem with Romeo Lavia and hopes it's not a big problem. Mm. Another one to add to the long, 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 long list of injuries in the Chelsea squad. Something peculiar is going on. Remember for years, guys, absolutely years, we used to laugh at Arsenal for having these constant revolving injuries. And Chelsea never had injuries. I know people joked about oh, it was because we had either Canario. Uh, is that how you pronounce her name? I think I might have butchered her surname pronunciation there. Eva, the doctor, she was nice, wasn't she? But, you know, it's going to be a whole medical team, isn't it? Uh, but the point being, Chelsea just never got any injuries. And now all we do is get injuries, like, consistently. It's like our style, it's our vibe. So for, you know, Lavia to come, to come back in and immediately get injured, really, really frustrating and worrying. And holistically, we have to just keep very mindfully watching the medical department at Chelsea and hoping and praying that there is a change eventually. Uh, positive is Christopher Nkunku, who got a good 70 minutes-ish, um, probably largely forced because both Palmer and Sterling were suspended for this game. I do wonder if Pochettino in another instance would have just preferred to give him like 35 minutes off the bench rather than giving him a 70 minutes from the start. But still, Nkunku did an uh, interview after the game and he was like, yeah, I feel great, don't worry about it, I'm fine, good to go. So who knows, maybe he'll even get another start against Luton. Though I do wonder that perhaps Palmer and Sterling uh, will be available, they'll go straight back in on the wings and we might see Nico Jackson continue up top. But we will do a preview for the Luton game after Pochettino's pre-match press conference. So I do want to spend some time speaking about attackers respectively. I wanted to speak about Mudrik, Noni, and maybe a little bit about Nico Jackson, but we have got Oh, here we go from Fabrizio Romano. Chelsea have signed yet another wonder kid. Is it a Todd Bowley wonder kid project? You know, there's articles saying that Todd Bowley is not really as involved as he was. He's going to the odd game rather than every game. He's doing more stuff in America and his other businesses. There's even a suggestion from The Guardian that there could be a long-term power struggle between Kelly Lake, I guess, Iqbali and Todd Bowley in terms of ownership and long-term vision. Well, at the moment, the long, the short-term vision, the long-term vision. There's no vision. We're all in the dark. Seemingly that's going on. Although maybe a continued theme that we're going to see here is signing more talented youngsters. So let's check out this Fabrizio Romano tweet. Chelsea have completed deal to sign Senegal under 17 midfielder Pape Diong. As revealed two weeks ago, born in 2006, Pepe will turn 18 in the summer and will become part of the Chelsea project. De Jong was at Stamford Bridge just two weeks ago. Yeah, obviously this is another youngster. I think he's a defensive central midfielder. In terms of like the young children of this Chelsea team, you could build a midfield of a double pivot of De Jong and Uga Chukwu. You know, you could have attacking midfielders or you could have a free man midfielder, add Andre Santos in there who looks like he may be recalled from Forest. You could have an attacking midfield number 10 or Cesare Cassidy who of course is on loan at Leicester down in the championship. All these youngsters. There are so many and they keep coming. Of course we're waiting for Kendry Pires to turn up. Chelsea have huge, huge, huge hopes on the Ecuadorian attacking midfielder who's supposed to be like the one. So we'll have to see what happens there. But essentially the show goes on for Chelsea Maybe Todd Bowley is this, you know, is this kid's project still his? Or is it Iqbali's all along? Or is it the sporting directors? It's really, really difficult to get some insight of actually whose plan is this long term. But Chelsea are continuing with it. This is another youngster signed. They believe this is the way to go. This is the agreed business model, at least for the moment. Some people thinking and are speculating it's purely financial. They see this is the structured way to do business in football. You buy these talents, you have them layer down the line, spend the money now, it's smart investment, it's smart money. Some people are speculating that this might actually be a uh, precautionary measure against upcoming sanctions in the next few seasons. Perhaps from the Roman Abramovich stuff that we're dealing with at the moment, the allegations of course there's no charges against Chelsea as of yet and there's some people guessing speculating here that Chelsea may be preparing to face a transfer ban that could be perhaps longer than a window or two windows maybe it could be like a two-year transfer ban I mean that's like I'm literally pulling that out of the air but in that instance Chelsea would be prepared to have a massive pool of players uh, whether they're like farmed out of Strasbourg or whatever to you know to call upon essentially now Strasbourg fans won't fancy thank me for saying that and they're still massively against the blue co-ownership we'll have to see if their mind changes if they develop as a football team and start doing more stuff but for the moment they're not happy with it but you do you do have to wonder and ask the question what's 
what's happening here? So anyway, let me know what you think about this new signing, the uh, defensive midfielder that will arrive when he's 18. Comment down below. I do want to spend some time now talking about the Chelsea attackers. First of all, I want to start off with Mikhailo Mudrik. He quietly had a good game again yesterday against Crystal Palace. Of course, got the goal. And no, it was just sort of a standing finish. It was right place, right time for a cutback. The time of goal, Chelsea have just not been available for. In fact, we've seen so many instances where you've seen a ball cut back into the area and just no one's there and it rolls away harmlessly. But no, Mikhailo Mudrik was there. He was good in terms of his defensive work. And yeah, his dribbling's good. He's, I'm, I will say, I'm very mindful not to like gas him up too much. And uh, there's been instances really recently where he's had really poor moments in games. But at the same time, I, I don't want to slag him off for that. I just want to recognize both and sort of reiterate what I keep saying and what I heard that really good um, uh, piece by Adam Crafton on, which was an analysis when he's at Shakhtar, uh, when he was going to go to Arsenal for mega money, gone to Chelsea, Chelsea's been a circus. But ultimately, the you know the, the raw material, the asset that is Mikhailo Mudrik is just such raw power, and that's it. It's really uncoached, or certainly had been super uncoached. Potter saw it, uh, Lampard sort of saw it, and indeed... Um, Pochettino's seen it and Pochettino's put loads of one-to-one -one work in with him probably to try and catch him up to speed but the kid's been getting better and he's been performing better and you can see that um, probably most notably in his defensive work he looked all at sea before in terms of patterns where to go when to press like knowing the pressing triggers when to recover and come back and he actually had his teammates telling him off in many instances in the past sort of you know 12 months or whatever but he's become more and more clearly he's a very dedicated uh, professional uh, both in terms of his physical build, but hope, you know, seemingly his application to learning as well, and that's getting better. And I think over time he could be a really devastating asset, as well as being remaining a team player, and that's what Chelsea need, especially at the top level in the Premier League. Look at these Man City players, they're all flair, this, that and the other, but they can all put in the hard graft. Like someone like Salah, Salah will track back and like tackle and press and run and set up his teammates and score goals himself. You've got to be able to do it all. Uh, Sadio Mane was a great example at Liverpool as well. Obviously playing in the same position as Mudrik as a left winger. Um, just being really intelligent defensively, knowing about high turnovers, knowing about positional awareness, as well as just being a goal threat. So... Thumbs up for Mudrik, slow development, but I don't want to get excited. I just want to let him sort of percolate in the background and do his thing, you know? Right, before we do talk about the match winner in Noni Madweke, which is a really interesting case, I must say. Uh, let's talk about Nico Jackson. I can kind of understand why Pochettino keeps playing him. Pochettino defends him all the time. He said early doors in the season, he can be one of the best strikers in the world. We know he's got a horrendous uh, yellow card record for dissent and arguing and stuff like he needs to knock that out of his game it's needless you're not a child you're, tw you're young you're 22 or whatever but you've had that's it now stop 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 the 400 yellow cards for descent. Chelsea are top of the tree in the Premier League for yellow cards. And, you know, largely you look at someone like Nico Jackson. How many has he got? Eight yellow cards or something? And I think like seven are for descent. Mental, just needless. Anyway, calm down, Yannick. I can kind of understand why Pochettino is uh, going for him. He can see his combinational play. He is got skills, Nico Jackson. He's got skills. Of course, he was a winger. When wingers become strikers, they're often more technically good with their feet and good at combinational play. Maybe he doesn't have that like ruthless finishing confidence I spoke about when, of course, off the bench when Nkunku came off and he scored a header into the side netting and then he was throwing his head at balls. You never see Nico Jackson do that. I don't know why. I know maybe we don't put crosses in the box much, but he doesn't throw himself so much to finish chances. Like the same way Diego Costa would be like, I don't care if I lose my head. <laughs> the same way Alfie Gilchrist did when he tried to clear that ball, just throwing his head everywhere it hurts. No bravery. Um, so we need to see that a little bit more from Jackson in terms of confidence. Of course, he missed a sitter. He will miss sitters for the moment. Maybe he will forever, but that can still be leveled out with other goals. He scored what was... A great goal, obviously a little bit offside. A bit unlucky, but then again, he's always offside and that's something that he's got to learn to do better. Very, very frustrating player because he does show moments. You're like, oh yeah. Uh. But then again, we're going to lose him to AFCON. Maybe that'll be good for both him and us, actually. Probably be good for him because he gets to go and play with his country. He plays for Chelsea now, which is a bit of a superstar, you know, thing. Um, and then maybe he can like, reset, play differently, score some goals for them and, and then, you know, return or whatever. And then uh, we'll give some someone else a chance, whether it's Breuer, who looked a little bit better since, uh, obviously, last time out, which was awful, but um, I kind of want to see Nkunku down the middle. But anyway, 
I don't want to go off on too many tangents. He's been spoken about Nico Jackson by pundits and in uh, articles and stuff. So I wanted to reference that. Please do comment down uh, below as I go when I speak about Mudrick. Jackson and I want to spend some time now and talk about Noni Madweke. So Noni came on, he won the penalty, he converted the penalty quite coolly and then was very confident in his post-match interview. This is a confident kid by the way. It was a peculiar signing, you know, an England under 21 international for like what 28 million pounds from PSV. He wasn't really scoring goals but it was very much a profile football manager scouting type of a signing. Of course, at the end of last season, Frank Lampard was really trusting him in the starting lineup, but he didn't, it's very hard to come across as a superstar <laughs> in last season with Chelsea. Um, it's tough for him because we signed Cole Palmer and there's no way as things stand, um, no matter how, how much faith you have in Madueke, because of the immediate productivity, he's not starting over Cole Palmer. And Cole Palmer should be starting on the right wing for Chelsea. And when fit and not suspended, Cole Palmer does start on the right wing for Chelsea. So there is that. It's very tough for him. You, ca you can't really see him. He is very much a right winger. I can't see him playing on the left side. And I don't see him playing uh, in the hole in the middle. He wants to be on that right flank. And that's where he does his best work. Great work. He's been injured. He's also not been selected as well at times, which is frustrated, which Pochettino spoke about. He says, look, he's upset at me and I get it. And, you know, it's good that he got to channel that and help us in the game. I think it's good news. Of course, he was listed kind of with like Trevo Chalaba and Ian Matson, And he was sort of joining that list as a trio for potential players that could go in January, like days time now when the January transfer window opens. So that was kind of like, um, you know, he wants to get out. And we, we kind of were thinking, yeah, I get it. I get it. You know, Chelsea bought Cole Palmer. He's doing really well. Uh, he's just not getting a sniff at all. And it would be sad, but maybe he does go in January and spend one year at Chelsea and... That was it, you know, whether it be a loan or a sale or whatever. But clearly he doesn't want to go. Clearly he believes himself and he showed here it could be a valuable asset. Now, I've, Pochettino uses five subs at the moment. He uses all his subs. Maybe he just turns to Noni as a substitute. And if you get substitute appearances, you get chances. If he keeps doing bits, you get a start. And if you do bits from the start, then Cole Palmer's in trouble. Do you know what I mean? Or if he does indeed move over to the other side and show he can play there, then, uh, then you know, he can, he can do it. He can do it. But ultimately, it's going to be tough for him, is what I'm saying. Hopefully, for him, and indeed us as Chelsea fans and Chelsea as a club, him demonstrating what he can do there will see him used more as a substitute. Maybe in also rotation if, you know, if Cole gets in the red zone or injured. And maybe we can trust him a bit more. But let me know what you think about Noni Medweke down in the comment section, because obviously, Cole Palmer looks like a bargain at 40 million quid. But it's still best part of like, you know, well, it's a lot more money than Nonny cost and he looks a lot better. He just does. So comment down below. Let me know what you think of Nonny and his future. How he could, is he just destined to be a rotational player, substitute at Chelsea? Do you think he'll even stay around? Do you think he'll eventually go? Comment down below and let me know what you think. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps it up for today. I look forward to uh, reading your comments down below on everything I've spoken about in today's video. Uh, do consider supporting the content simply by liking and subscribing and if you want to follow me on social media it's at football yannick on the instagram there should be a link in the top of the description other than that friends i'm out peace